Hello and welcome to the Case IH Axle Flow 250 Series Combine Operation Guide. In this video we shall be looking at the feeder, its features, crop settings and maintenance procedures. Please be aware that before undertaking any work under the feeder or header, always lock the feeder ram as shown to effect safe working practices. Drive to the feeder comes via a shaft directly from the engine and PTO gearbox assembly on the left hand side of the combine. Within the PTO gearbox the header and feeder reversing mechanism is housed. Reverse operation will be explained in further videos. Drive to the feeder and stone beater is via the gearbox mounted on top of the feeder housing then continues downward to the lower 90 degree gearbox to the header drive. To achieve even feeding into the single rotor design, the feeder housing is relatively narrow. It consists of four chain system with cast slats uniformly mounted in groups of three across its width. The front roller is allowed to float away from its stops depending upon the bulk of material, while at the same time keeps enough weight on the crop mat to ensure consistent crop flow. At the top of the feeder is the chain drive and sprockets immediately followed by the stone beater. The front face plate angle is adjustable to allow the header to be matched to the combine such that the header's knife moves parallel to the ground when being moved fore and aft. The initial angle setting is normally carried out by the dealer before delivery. However, occasionally the face plate can be angled forward slightly to improve performance in crops such as grass seed, soya and maize. This is achieved by loosening the upper and lower bolts on the right hand side of the feeder followed by the bolts on the left hand side and tilting the face plate as required to suit the crop and conditions. Take care to have the header fully lowered to the ground when loosening the bolts to avoid any sudden unexpected movement of the face plate and header. An optional hydraulic tilting face plate can be specified from the factory at the time of build if required. This allows 12 degrees of movement and can be adjusted on the move via the in-cab screen and multifunction handle. The header is easily attached by hooking the face plate into the cross beam at the centre of the header and mechanically locking it into place by using the lever and lock mechanism. The header hydraulics are coupled by using a single lever hydrofix stored on the side of the feeder when not in use as seen. Finally, the electrics are attached by using the master splined half turn connector. Drive to the header is via a 90 degree gearbox on the left hand side of the feeder. The 21 spline stub shaft completes the coupling to the header. The 21 spline coupling is also on the right hand side of the feeder housing for use with twin knife drive headers and maze headers. Depending upon the header width and the bulk of material to be taken into the feeder during harvest operations, the front roller can be opened into a wide, mid or narrow position. If regular blocking of the feeder occurs, it could be this adjustment that needs attention. This is achieved by adjusting the position of the roller stops just inside the feeder housing. Take the weight of the roller using a suitable lever and block it. Then. Using the squared bolt on the sides, the rectangular cam can be rotated into one of three positions. High, as seen, turned 90 degrees to medium, and turned 180 degrees to the low or narrow position. Don't forget to adjust both left and right hand blocks to the same height to avoid an unnecessary twist. Turning our attention to general maintenance of the feeder, regular checks need to be made while the machine is being blown down. Depending upon the cutting height and soil type, it will be necessary to empty the stone trap located under the full width of the feeder. This needs to be done daily or, if for example very stony ground, more regularly. 
This is a manual operation and is easily achieved by pushing down on the over centre lever on the left hand side and letting it fall. Give it a shake to ensure that the trough is completely empty and then bring the lever back into its home position confirming that it is locked into place. The gearbox oil levels need to be checked daily using the sight glasses. The header must be lower to the ground or lines horizontal before checking. Regularly check the feeder chain tension. This simply needs to be measured against the spring length indicator plate located on each side of the feeder housing. Every 100 hours there are grease points on the top shaft and beta shaft. To gain access to these the feeder needs to be lowered and the engine turned off. The top cover needs to be completely removed. Using a lever against the slats, rotate the shafts so as to gain access to the appropriate grease nipples on both the drive shaft and the stone beater shaft. There are also some grease points under the drive shaft guarding. Remove the bolts and slide the guards inwards to reveal the grease nipples in question. These need greasing every 300 hours or every winter service, whichever comes first. Always remember that more comprehensive information can be found in the operator's manual which should be read prior to harvest operations, maintenance and repairs. Thank you for watching and have a great season.